today I have the distinct pleasure of chatting with a recognizable Hollywood actor who has appeared in countless theater, film, and television roles. He's also a director, writer, producer, race car driver, swimmer, family man, dog owner, friend, and a very favorite Western New York native son, William Fickner. Did I miss anything? I think you <laughs> think you pretty much covered everything and, and things that have yet to happen. So what brings you to our and your hometown? Uh, well, you know, I do, uh, I do get back here quite a bit. Um, this is probably, I don't know, seventh or eighth time in the last 12 months. Um, I was back here in particular for, uh, um, I was doing a few things today um, for the city of Buffalo mm -hmm. and, and New York State. Things I can't quite talk about. But oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I flew back here for that today. So um, you're working. So I'm working. Yeah. I'm doing things. And you're working and having some fun. I'm having family. I am. I am having some fun. I had a lovely dinner last night, and uh, which is not hard to do in Buffalo. And taking off. Got to go back tomorrow. I wish I could stay one more night. Mm, but so my weird. son's my son's got a double header Sunday morning, and I don't miss those. So. So, um, do you mind if I jump right into when you come to town? Would you please jump right in, <laughs> Constance? Please. When you come to town, the social media just lights up. And I always wanted to ask you, does it bother you being photographed so much when you, when you come home and everywhere you go, besieged by people? Uh, no. Uh, and, and honestly, I, I mean that. No, it doesn't at all. First of all, the social media part of it, the, the Twitter, Facebook, and that, I, I don't have any social media, so it's not like it's not like my personal devices like light up and all of a sudden it's like, oh, look at all this social media. I don't I don't really see any of it. Um, but as far as like photographs and that, I mean, when somebody comes up to me and says, you know, I'd like, yeah, may I take a picture? You know, I, I learned a long time ago from when I was on a soap a long time ago, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot of soap watchers and people would want to take photos. Um, it was the first time that I ever really experienced that. You know, does it does it make me excited and 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 you know, oh man, I want my picture taken. Not uh -huh. really. I can. <laughs> it, it's fine if it doesn't happen. Yeah. But the truth about it is, you know, usually when somebody comes up to you, do you feel obliged? No, but when somebody comes up to you, it's it's a big thing for them. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, people come up to you and they're a little nervous. You know, they don't want to bother you, mm -hmm. and they're a little nervous, so their hand might be shaking. And and you know. If you make something out of it or it's weird, you know, it's weird for everybody. It's, you know, people are really coming from their heart and they just really want a photo. And if you just stop right then and there and go, come on, let's take a picture right now. They're f happy, they're great, mm -hmm. everything's, you know, nothing's weird, there's no drag. <laughs> you take a photo with them, it takes like two seconds and um, it's great. Well, so, but, but you're quite famous. Do you think of yourself as famous? I mean, in, in all over the world, there are people that, Tweet me about you on yeah, Twitter. I don't. Uh, um, do you think when you do you think of yourself as a famous person, since you're not on social media? I think that I do things that have a, a, a level of recognizability, whether working in film or television things. Um, but do I honestly think of myself as a famous person? I can honestly say that I I, re I really don't think so. Um, I just had this conversation with a friend literally moments before we started the show. And um, because he was saying to me, you know, you know, you were in movies that play like everywhere. And um, I don't know, I, I, there are sometimes I'll see people, recognizable actors that I uh, really respect and I'll see them and I'll think, oh God, that's that actor. They're, wow, they're like, they're, I, to me, they're famous, and it may be people that have done less than I have mm -hmm. done, but I, I still don't uh, equate the word back to um, um, myself. Yeah, I get that from you. I get that you're quite um, unassuming in that department. Let me tell you something. I'm a, I'm a big deal at the La Cunada mm -hmm. YMCA where I, I go at home mm -hmm. and I swim. I'm kidding. Um, there's, it's really... <laughs> I'm a big deal in the pool at the La Cunada Y. Uh, <laughs> I believe you are. I believe you're huge over there. But besides, okay, let me ask you this. Besides the weather, when you're walking around in Buffalo or, say, L.A., what's the difference? Or is there, if any? Between the two cities? Yeah. Uh, huge. Um, uh, I like 
the groove. Mm -hmm. I, I'm home when I'm in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. If I'm walking through the Eastern Hills Mall or going to some bar in downtown Buffalo, I, you know, I'm, I'm home here. Um, I mean, for that alone, every time I get back, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for every, every time I get off the plane and I walk through the airport, and I, and I truly mean that. Um, L.A. is a different kind of place, you know? Do I, do I love L.A.? You better like your car because you're in it. Mm -hmm. Do I like my home? I love my home. I love my, my so-called man cave, as my lovely wife Kimmy has deemed it. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I grew up on the East Coast. I have East Coast rhythms, I, and I think there is a difference. Not good or bad or right or wrong, just a difference. It's just a difference, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I lived after college. I went to two years uh, to SUNY Farmingdale on Long Island and then transferred in my second two years at SUNY Brockport right outside of Rochester. Um, and after that, after I graduated college, I lived in New York City for 29 years. So, you know, New York is, is you know, I feel at home when I, when I get off the plane in New York City. I feel at home when I get off the plane in Buffalo. I'm almost feeling at home in LA. <laughs> I'm getting there. Oh, don't I'll ever get feel there. totally. No, no, no. I'll there. get there. I'll get there. So, um, do you ever run into any Buffalonians in in, in your work in, in film or? I know you do when you go to football games if the Bills are playing out there. But have you ever run into anyone while you were making? You mean a film? like when the Bills played the Rams a few months ago? Yeah. And, and the Coliseum had I think ninety thousand people that day, and at least forty five thousand were from Buffalo. <laughs> Yeah, it is the it is the picture on my screensaver. My so two boys were they there already, or did just, they, did they migrate? I don't know where they came from, but I couldn't believe it. I was kind of worried because you know they, you know the football fans in L.A. can be a little rough. The holdover Raider fans, you know. Um, but I said to my sons, "Listen, just don't be screaming Buffalo too loud. We don't know how nuts." They're. And you, and I, I we walked in the stadium, and 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 half the place was in like red, white, and blue. With Bill's jerseys well, that must on. Have felt wonderful. Oh my God, it was Did amazing. You love it? Yeah, yeah. There was still a bunch of there were still twelve guys behind me with their shirts off, going, "Whose house is this?" And they were like Buffalo people. And I'm like, "Can you just? Not, we don't have to. We don't have to go that far." Uh, I think it's so wonderful that you're so you're still at heart such a Buffalo booster. And um, it's been reported, in fact, that um, you have had a hand in getting some tax credit here for filmmakers that incentivize film making here in Buffalo. Yes? Is that something that? Yes, no, no, th th that is true. Um, it was three years ago this summer when um, uh, the Buffalo Niagara Film Commissioner, Tim Clark, who's a I know Tim. I, I don't know if he's, he's a great. younger brother or an older brother, but he's a bro. <laughs> he's uh, a bro. Yeah, he's a, he's a younger brother. Yeah. Um, Tim had been helping me out with a project that I've been trying to get going here in, in upstate New York. Mm -hmm. I really wasn't thinking about Buffalo at the time. Um, but uh, Tim, had, Tim had called me up. Uh, the way the story went, he called me up and he said, listen, I remember it was July 16th. Um, three years ago this summer, so it was 2014, and he said, can you get back here, it was, it was a Thursday, can you get back to Buffalo on a Thursday for like a breakfast meeting that we're having? Uh, Cindy Abbott Letro is gonna be there, mm -hmm. uh, Tim, um, uh, Nora Brown, the film commissioner from the central New York, Rochester area, uh, and also there were gonna be a, a, a couple of state senators, uh, assemblymen, and one of those state senators was Senator Pat Gallivan. Mm. And really the purpose of this meeting, this breakfast meeting was to talk about, and my part of it, I mean, everybody had something to say about, you know, that we didn't really have competitive tax incentives in upstate New York. My part of it was really to say, I have a film that I co-wrote that I would like to direct and be in, and I, and I wrote it for upstate New York, but I can't really, um, I can't really get people behind the project because there, there are no competitive tax incentives up here. And, and I don't want to shoot it in Shreveport, Louisiana, um, right. which is where people who read the script, you know, in the years before that said, you know, maybe we could do it in Shreveport or maybe we'll do it in Canada. No disrespect to our great neighbors up north. I just didn't want to. I wanted it to be here. I wanted it to be the beauty, the beauty of upstate New York that nobody really captures on film. Um, especially in the indie film world, because, um, you know, unless you're doing it on a wing and a prayer, um, you know, but the sort of budget that I'm looking for, which isn't a lot of money, but those sort of films were not really being made up here. Out of that meeting, which was a great meeting, and I really believe 
the state senators that were there um, understood this, and in particular Pat, you know, because a couple of months after that meeting, he introduced the legislation uh, to Governor Cuomo about changing the tax credits in upstate New York. And January 1st of 2015, those tax credits did change and, and all of a sudden got competitive for, you know, in the, I, I don't know all the numbers of all the different states, but people are coming here because of them. Yes, and now that it's in place, you know, I work at the Buffalo History Museum as well, and they often use that gorgeous neoclassical building as a backdrop um, for some of the movies that have already been made. And so with the tax credit in place, would you say that Buffalo is ready for film, or are there some things that are still needed? Well, I think it's a little, I think it's a little bit like Field of Dreams. If you build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. Uh, the tax incentive is one of the biggest building blocks to having something like that happen. It is changing now. You know, films came here last year that the sort of size of a film outside of, you know, way back in the day when the Natural was made because they were looking for an amazing stadium that was, you know, as old as, as the old rock pile was, the old War Memorial. They were looking for that and there it was, you know, why build it? It's shoot it in Buffalo. Then as the story goes, I guess when they came to Buffalo, uh, the people making that film and looked at that stadium, they thought, you know, there's an awful lot here that's really amazing. So I believe they shot most of that film here. Um, so is it changing? For sure. And, and it will continue to change. And also, too, uh, recently um, I had read that, uh, uh, that some of the, the unions, you know, that you know, employ folks that work in the theatrical motion picture business, have uh, added more members in Western New York, and that's those are the steps. Those are the beginning, one by one. You put these building blocks together, and all of a sudden, we have a competitive place. Um, there's still more to do, but I, I, we're certainly going in the right direction. William, you are probably the hardest working man in show business. I mean, you do all this for Buffalo, for the love of filmmaking, and yet you are in television. You do voiceovers. You're in movies. Is there anything you want to talk about upcoming um, for our viewers, maybe, movie-wise? Um, anything opening soon that we should be looking for? I don't know. Last year, uh, 2016 was um, was my indie my indie film year, mm -hmm. <laughs> or so I've called it. Um, last year was 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 a very strange year because all throughout the year. Uh, I, I kept getting scripts uh, to read or, or offers for things that were tiny little movies, um, not a lot of money. And I mean, some of them were, you know, listen, we, we got $100 a day, you know, can, and I'd read the script and I'd go, wow, you know, one scene or three scenes or five scenes or something. Uh, it seemed to be a year like that. And I think last year I, um, I worked on seven or eight little films like this. Now, films like this, you don't know how they're ultimately going to come together. I mean, I, I love the directors, loved all the scripts. I really don't do anything unless I do, you know, really love it or believe in it. Um, and it certainly was, none of them were a payday. Uh, so what's going to happen with all of them this year? I don't know. So they're all out there. And we they're, look they're all out there, and, still and being put together and made. And, uh, and, and I have festivals and... Yes, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, one in particular, uh, this film called American Wrestler, uh, that John Voigt was in small film, shot it in 18 days. Uh, it's, you know, I, I've seen the movie a few times now at different festivals around the country. And it, it, it's, it won the Boston Film Festival, won the Napa Film Festival, it won the Audience Award at uh, Newport Festival. It's gone to a lot of these little festivals, but that's even no guarantee that, you know, well, it's going to get it. Uh, well, I, I'm I'm <laughs> trying to figure that out right now. Okay. I literally am trying to figure that out to to have a screening up at a yeah, special screening here Buffalo back in Buffalo. Wants I do. To see this. And stuff. I want to bring yeah. the, the the young uh, uh, lead in it. Uh huh. And um and the guy that produced mm -hmm. it, who's also in it, and the story is based on his life. Uh, but we're literally trying to find the right date right now to do. Uh, we've got uh, uh, you know to be a benefit screening for. Uh, a great cause. Oh, good. So then you'll, to, then you'll come back. I'm always coming back. And let back. us know when it's happening. I'm always coming happening. back. You can come back here. Um, so this is a question you may, may or may not or want to answer. Have you ever regretted turning down a part? Um, 
I don't think so. I, don't, I honestly don't think so. No, I'm just I'm tracking this in my mind for a second and think, is there anything that I... Um, like you said, no, this isn't me, and then all of a sudden somebody else takes it and it turns into like the biggest... No, I've never, I've, I've, I've never really okay. had, I've never had never that had um, sort of thing. Uh, I, I've had parts that I've, that I've turned on that agents and managers and casting people have thought I was a, you know, a little nuts and like, how could you turn that down? And uh, maybe because I didn't like it or didn't think that I would, uh, could really find that guy. Mm -hmm. um, but um, no, I don't think I, I, I have. Did you ever regret taking on a part? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I, in early years, there's probably there's probably two, mm -hmm. but I, I I'm just putting it out that there's two that but one I can remember one. So do I have to watch every single thing you've ever been no, into? No, 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 no. Which I'll, one it is? I don't mind. I don't mind. <laughs> it was the second <laughs> no. movie that I ever did, uh. and I screen tested for the the co lead in it, and I did not get it. Um, it was a film called Virtuosity. Russell Crowe got the part, and. They offered me another role in it, and I was like, I really shouldn't do this. But I thought, no, 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 I'm, I, I needed to work. Uh, I, I just, it was just one of those times. It's not like it wasn't a good part, and I liked the director a lot, a gentleman named Brett Leonard. So I decided to do it, and, um, you know, it was kind of hard because I really wanted, you know, and I tested for this, uh, the lead role, and I ended up with the supporting part. And then when I went to see the film, I remember I was with my, my good buddy Max in New York, Max Horowitz, and we went to, I, I didn't go to the premiere or anything, and, and uh, we went to a movie theater, and I said, hey, Max, Max, watch this scene coming up. Like, oh, fuck this scene. And then the film came up, and it played, and it skipped right over that scene. I'm like, oh, well, you know, probably didn't fit in the movie. But no, watch this scene oh, coming no. up. And it, well, <laughs> oh, okay. Because that one didn't floor. fit either. Like 90% of what I shot <laughs> oh. did not make the movie. And what they left in, uh, they took hurts. out a, they took out a context mm -hmm. and, you know, like lines were coming out of, from one scene, it was... So it didn't flow. One of the only, one of the only regrets I ever had. All right, now I have a really hard question. You may not be able to even answer this, but I'll this bet is for I the can. Daily Buzz ladies. The Daily Buzz ladies? Yes. And where are they? And um, they're talking about movies in another location right now at the okay. moment, as we speak. Um, what's it like growing up with four sisters? Uh, Is that something you can answer <laughs> while well, they're all still alive? <laughs> wouldn't trade it for the world. Yeah. No, truly. So did your mom favor you, though, being the only no, but boy? I, think, or, I, I mean, it's kind of natural, listen, I would think. Listen, I, I think when you're the only boy and, and you have in a house of five kids and four sisters, you know, you, you're going to get a little king status whether you like it or not. Um, but uh, my mother told me the story, you know, that when I was younger, I think I was four or five. And so my sister Margaret was born. She's a year older. Then came me about a year and a half after Margaret. Then my sister Patty, who's my Irish twin by one day less than a year. Um, then my sister Mary. So my mother was pregnant with my sister Pamela. And she told me that she used to always tell me that she, she came up to me and she said, so would you, would you, would you rather have a brother or a sister, you know? And I said, I'd, I'd rather have a horse. Um, but I ended up with a sister, <laughs> and um, it's great. When you're preparing a role, have you ever used, or were you ever inspired by any of your Buffalo friends? Have you ever tapped into somebody you might know here? Because oftentimes you'll play like an everyman. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes I may not put my, you know, finger on exactly who it is, but uh, sure, there are rhythms of people that I remember growing up, um, spending summers working at the Pepsi Cola factory on on Walden. I I I I know that a couple of times along the way, I've certainly drawn some inspiration from some of the characters that I worked with there. Uh, but I, not long ago, and I'm not, a, I'm not remembering exactly what, but I, I, I worked on something, and, and, a, and a good friend of mine um, from high school, uh, his name is Tony Militello, and his lovely wife, Barb, and there was something I was working on, and, and it, was, it was Tony's 
like vocal rhythms. Oh, I know what it was. It was a film that literally just got sold yesterday. Uh, a film called, um, well, I'm not going to say what it is because okay. I don't want to. Uh, you don't want to jinx it. Yeah, but it's. We'll, uh, we'll see it someday. You'll, you'll see it, okay. yeah. It's uh, uh, Forrest Whitaker's in it and Travis Fimmel. It's, it's called Finding Steve McQueen. Ah, there was oh. a little bit of a, there was a rhythm thing in there uh -huh. that was very much Tony. Tony. And even when I would just play with the dialogue uh -huh. a little bit, uh, thinking about Tony, all of a sudden it, it just, it had a better flow. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if he'll recognize himself in it. I'm not going to tell him. I'm going <laughs> to say, Tony, <laughs> who, who am I thinking about? <laughs> so, so for you now, because you've been doing this for so long, is it about the craft and the process, or are you still driven by the passion, or is, is there still a hunger to do this? Or well, is I think it a little the bit whole, of both? I think the craft and the process and the passion is all, that's all really wrapped into one. Uh -huh. um, you know, I don't wear this as a badge of honor, and I've said this more than a few times in my life, but I don't, um, it's not like I don't need to make money and life and mortgage and kids and all that stuff like that, but I don't, I don't really take jobs f for money. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's great when it's a studio film and that's part of it, but like I was saying about my 2016 year and this whole indie thing, um, I, I am driven by, I mean, I'm really at a point, you know, in my life right now where if I read something and it's, and, and I find a rhythm of the character and it's, it's someplace that I want to go and, and I, I believe that I can, I can uh, find that and I think it's exciting um, and it's, there's, there's more than what I'm seeing on the page. There's some place to get to that I don't know what it is, but I think it's kind of thrilling. Um, that's enough. That's, that's more than enough to want to take, take that journey. It doesn't always happen that mm -hmm. way. But at the same time, I've, I've read things, uh, um, I've been offered a few things in the last few months. Um, one of them was just a ridiculous offer for whatever I make in my life. And, and I just, I love the people that were doing it, but I did not believe in the part. And it was the part. It was the part. Was. I, I didn't believe it. I didn't believe, uh, it's not that, like I didn't believe it, that, that, you know, that I was making some sort of a holier than now, I'm, I'm better than that thing. Not at all. No, it's, a, it's a place to find yet. within mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah. I remember when I was a younger, uh, you have good instincts. I think so. I think you have great instincts. I remember when I was younger and one time I, um, it's a true story. I was living in New York and I hadn't, wasn't really working in film. So I was probably in my early 30s, because I didn't do my first film until I was 36. And uh, I had an audition for a, a, a very famous director um, in, in a movie that ended up being a pretty famous movie. And one of the characters in there was, w was a pedophile. And I was like, mm, mm, yeah. I said to my, uh, my agent, I'm uh, not for me. And they're like, what do you mean it's not for you? It's, but it's only acting. I said, I, I, I know, I, you know, and I'm a young actor. And, you know, you want to please your agent and have yeah, them send you right. out and, and I'm not really working in movies and I want to. And I said, I, you know, I just. You couldn't justify that I dark just head. had to explain, yeah. you know, listen, this is, I'm going to go sit down in my apartment and all I'm going to do is think about this and try to find this. And I don't really want to, it's not, it's not mm -hmm. a road I want to be on. Yeah. And that's it. Good instincts. And, and, that, good. and that casting mm -hmm. director of that film. Hates your guts now? <laughs> no. She never called me in again. She never called you. Oh, well. What are you going to do? Well, you did the right thing. I think so. And, um, you know, much of what we learn growing up in life, we do learn from the movies. And the movies have taught us how to love, how to be in some cases. Um, if not for movies, how would we even know how to kiss? Have, it, it's such a... but. I'm going somewhere with this question. It's also such a cruel business, especially cruel for women. Do you have any comments on that? I mean, Hollywood is a cruel business for women. Do you agree with that, or, or think, has it changed, or is it changing, or evolving? Listen, I, I, think, I think show business, period, is, is much, much more difficult for women than for men. Mm -hmm. I mean, women seem to hit a certain age, <laughs> and all of a sudden, mm -hmm. you know. They're done. Or, or, or people might have that perception. I, I, uh, I don't think that because I'm, I'm inspired by 
many female actresses that I think are wonderful. You know, there are, there are people on the other side of the aisle from what I do in the creative side that, that you know, make calls on that, and, uh, and I can't really speak for them. But um, listen, you know, the old expression is if you have anything else you want to do in your life, do it outside of being in show business. And there's a reason, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, you know, everything, whether you're a, a man or a woman, when, whether you move to New York or LA or Chicago or London, wherever you go, everything within the business is, no one is looking for you. No one is looking to hire you. Agents have their own clients that aren't working. Um, no one's looking for, for you. That has to be some sort of an inner journey that you have to have that you really don't feel that there's anything else that you want and you want to pursue that because something inside of you has a little spark. Um, you know, I graduated SUNY Brockport with my degree in criminal justice and I had one teacher when I was a junior in college because I had to take a theater class, a woman named Sally Rubin in an improv class that was that took me on, uh, to the side after a month of class and was like, are you, I really think that you need to do this. I thought she was a little nuts. Wow, um, so she recognized She just right away. stopped me one day and said, are you mm -hmm. having as great a time as I think you're having? Because uh -huh. I really think you need to do this. Um, it's, in, it's a conversation you never forget. No, you know? and yeah. good for her for pulling you aside to say that. So I still really? graduated a year and a half later with my criminal justice degree just in case. and <laughs> wouldn't trade it for the world but um, um, moved to New York after that and took the journey that's you know and I'm not alone you know well William I think people will be looking for you for a very 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 long time and I thank you so much for joining